Hi everybody, welcome back to the podcast. It's Luke from Foot Tech. Today we are discussing some help and tips for those who coach mixed abilities. Something that we do quite a lot at Foot Tech. We're a football school that welcomes any ability, whether it's somebody taking their first steps into football being very young or somebody who's late to football, a bit older but maybe not played football before. So we've got a lot of experience of this sort of thing. We've learned along the way as well. We've learned what works and what doesn't. And there's an approach to it, which we'll discuss. But hopefully after today, anybody listening to this involved in a grassroots team where you are dealing with mixed abilities, hopefully they'll just feel a bit more confident and comfortable in delivering sessions. And maybe if you're a parent listening to this as well, there'll be some just some useful information for you to bear in mind as well. So let's get into it. Some of these are going to be quite obvious, some of them not. And we'll start with some of the not so obvious ones. So restarts first and foremost restarts what I mean by that is this could be maybe a match at the end of your session and when the ball goes out of play so then we'd restart play what you can do here is take turns with the restarts so we do we do dribblings and kickings at, at foot tech or if it goes out for um for a goal kick it, it doesn't have to be the goalkeeper that's taking it it can be any player that wants to dribble it on so you can use that to your advantage with the weaker players because what you can do is take it in turns. So every player will get a chance to restart with the ball. So even the weaker players will have some contact time with the ball in that game because you can force the issue by saying it's it's their turn, it's your turn, whatever. Uh, so that just means that you, you, you're giving them a little bit more with the ball. That'll be slightly unopposed to an extent as well because the ball's out of play. So it just gives them maybe a bit of time to think about what they're doing feel a bit more comfortable so that's definitely one way with it Um, another way you can do it with restarts as well is let's say that there's a game going on and the ball gets kicked out of play and all the plays towards the right hand side of the field the coach can have balls in the hand ready to play back in and the coach can can pass the ball to the person that is considered one of the weaker players so then that player is getting the ball, but plays at the other side of the area. So they've got a little bit more time to control and play and pass and dribble and what have you. But again, you can control the amount of touches that that child gets to an extent, obviously, but at least you're allowing them that opportunity. So restarts can be used really effectively and you can control that to an extent, but certainly letting them take it in turns with the stuff like dribblings and kickings and what have you, that's, that's, that's a useful tip. The thing with... Um, the thing with the, the the coach playing it in to the player, you can actually try and help them score a goal in some ways. Because if play is all at one side of the field and, you, and you're able to pass that ball quickly, whilst everybody's distracted with the other thing, pass that ball quickly to, to that player that you want to help, then you might be able to help them get a goal, which is brilliant for their, their confidence, obviously. Not easy to do, don't get me wrong, but just an option for you there. Uh, next thing would be levels. So what I mean by this is within your activities, you could have different levels of challenge. At Foot Tech, we're big on the games-based model and we like all of our activities to represent the game of football as much as possible. So what I mean by that is there'll be a lot of opposed work. That's our, that's our philosophy, if you call that, but that's what we believe in. We believe that kids need to train as close to the game as possible. So we do a lot of opposed work. This makes it very difficult for a player, a beginner player coming into this, particularly if you've got maybe an older player who's never played football before, who's, who really has to train with similar ages at foot tech, they're not used to this. And we need to try and get them reps and success, but within this opposed environment. So this is tough. This is why hopefully some of the stuff I'm talking about today will help because we do it in a very, very difficult environment in terms of, uh, uh, of managing ability levels. So what I mean by levels is, we could have, let's say, a game where you set out an area and you've got lots of gates to dribble through. Now, what we would ordinarily say is we'd want a defender on each gate because that's that's the challenge, that's getting past the defender, like like in a game situation. But what we could do is have gates with defenders and gates without defenders. So that that player who's a beginner or the weaker player means they can choose where they go. So they can dribble through a gate for a point without a defender or they can go try and dribble through a gate with a defender for two points. But ultimately, yeah, we do want them to try and get get into the opposed stuff, obviously. But in terms of 
getting them confident and comfortable and dealing with the, with these mixed abilities. The fact that you've got different levels within your activity just means that everybody can have some form of success and you can encourage the, 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 the harder stuff, obviously. But just having that 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 part of a, an activity where there isn't a defender and no opposition, yeah, we don't like that too much, but it is a way of being able to deal with these, with these mixed abilities, as I say. So perhaps... Perhaps within an activity, you've got lots of goals that, that children are scoring, but each goal's got a goalkeeper. Again, maybe don't have a goalkeeper and some of them award less points, but they still get points for that. So there's still, still an element of success. Um, but it's the choice as well. It's the choice from it, which I think for a, a player coming into it who, you know, who you're trying to help, who is a bit, a bit behind everybody else, the fact that they've got the choice will probably make them feel a bit more comfortable as well. So it's up to them. They can go try and the easiest, easiest stuff, or they can try the harder stuff. And then every week, it's just about encouraging and encouraging them to do more and challenge themselves a, a little bit more. So hopefully that makes sense, having different levels to your activities where you can you can have different, uh, different levels of success. Challenges is next. Now, in some sessions, you'll find that your stronger players end up taking over. And if you're dealing with somebody that is very, very good at football and you've got children at the opposite end of that this this can be it can be tough to manage because the, the better players can sometimes almost take over a session so what we've started to do more of is perhaps give some of these players different challenges let's have an example maybe we're playing matches at the end and we know that there's two or three players that just dominate these matches I might say to these players okay well uh, I want you to play on the left hand side for this session, for the next 10 minutes. I want you to play on the left-hand side because I want you to work on your left foot a little bit more. I want to help you with your left foot. So I'm going to put you over to that side and I want you just to see if that helps. Helps It helps you develop that left foot. So I'm not saying he has to, or he, he or she has to use their left foot because that, that can hamper them a little bit, which I'll come on to in a second. What I'm, set, what I'm doing is, is putting them maybe into an area of the field that is going to challenge them a little bit more. It's great for them because they're getting a different uh, different type of development. But then also, those players that you're trying to help that are maybe lesser ability, it might just mean they're getting more time on the ball in other areas of the pitch. So if this if this better player or players are playing on the left-hand side maybe, then the other players can will naturally probably tend to move towards the other side. So the success is going to be... is going to have more chance of success, more contact time on the ball, but each are getting their own level of development as well there. Again, not easy to manage. Another example of that might be um, you could ask your, maybe give your, your better players a challenge within the game. So maybe it's, right, I want you to sit back in this match for the next five minutes and I want you to try and get the ball and play forwards, OK? Get the ball, play forwards. How many forward passes can you make in the next five minutes? And so naturally then, that player will sit back sit back in maybe more of a defensive role and then he or she's going to try and play those forward passes so they're still getting development it's just you're making it a bit more specific to them but then you're getting them away from just dominating the whole session getting the ball dribbling past everybody 12 times and smashing it in the top corner so you, you, they're still getting elements of development whilst those players that need to catch up are going to be having a little bit more success and a little bit more contact time on the ball within context of, of the game so some of the a more obvious one is obviously manage the groupings as best you can. Not always easy. I get that. And we've had it numerous times. It's not always easy to just have two separate sessions running side by side or two separate activities running side by side. It, not least from sort of an emotional point of view as well is you don't want some children thinking they're the weaker players and what have you. And equally some children thinking they're top dog because that can also be damaging for, for them. We won't go into that in too much detail today because it's a it, we can go off on a massive tangent. But you can manage the groupings. Maybe you're doing one v ones. Can you match up the one v ones as best as possible? But then equally, expose the better players to the weaker ones, the weaker ones to the better ones for an element or, or a time in that session because it does help them both. It helps them both in different ways. But what we're saying is maybe if you can group them initially into some sort of ability levels, then that might just help the activity, the session initially. And then, you know, maybe 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 we change it. Maybe we expose them to different players. Um, you don't want it to be 100-0 every game. If you've got a 1v1 and you've got your best player against your worst player, 
it's, it's not doing anything for the better player if they're spanking that kid 100 nil, and it's certainly not doing anything for that for that weaker player either. Uh, and by the way, I don't like using these terms, but it just you know in the, in the context of this video, it just helps people understand what I'm talking about. In in any session, you're going to have your higher ability and your lower ability. That, that's that's just the way it is. Um, but that's yeah, like I said, a little bit more of an obvious one, but try to control the groupings. And I think if I'm a parent watching that, then you're going to get those that maybe maybe recognise what you're doing and like the fact you're doing that. And then equally, you'll get those that don't like it because they don't like that their child is, is, is put into a, a category as such, more, more, more so the weak category. But you're doing it you're doing it for them. You're doing it for the right reasons. So definitely try and manage those groupings where you can, but also expose them both to each other as well. Don't, you don't need to keep them separate for a full session. Just get the initial sort of successes for each side, the initial development on each side, and then we can start mixing it in. That might be in within one session or it might be across a couple of weeks, few weeks. Um, another semi-obvious one is to overload the teams as well. So maybe you have a, a 3v2. You know, one of your, your best player and a, and a half decent player against against three, four v two, five v two, five v three, whatever it might be, you can use that to your advantage as well. So you can overload the better players um, to, to to play to play against the others. Again, you don't want this to happen all the time because you've got to be mindful that you're still you're still caring for that player that is considered or players that are considered the best, and they don't always want to be on a team where. They've got less players and things like that because that, that can get a bit boring and a bit... They want success. They want to win. They want to score goals. So we can't keep doing things to restrain them in that regard and make it harder for them, but we can drip feed these things in, which means that they are getting a challenge and they are improving as a result of that. But then equally, the, the other players have got chance to catch up and have their own versions of success because there's a less one less player to play against or two less players to play against and so on. Um yeah, it, 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 you don't want to be doing this all the time because it can just get a little bit... I, th I think some of the players can just get a bit down about it, essentially. Um, the other thing is don't make it obvious. So if you're trying to help some of the players that need, that need more help, saying things like, pass to him, pass to her, you must pass to her before you can score a goal, that will do nothing for anybody not least on a decision making uh, point from a decision making point of view in a game um if if a player has the ball but then must pass to that player that you consider the weaker player must pass that play before we could score if that's not the right decision to make it's harmful for development but then it's obvious it's obvious to that that player that needs extra help it's obvious to them that they are the weaker player and we don't want that they're probably conscious of that anyway, particularly if they're in, in a new environment. They're probably conscious of that and they don't they don't want that. We've seen it before where um, it might be, oh, that, that player can't get tackled. And it's just like, mm, I get the premise behind it and I get the idea you're trying to help. But really, from a psychological point of view, it's probably not the best thing to say you must pass to that person or that person can't be tackled. All the players will start to realise that there's a hierarchy um, on ability and it, and it just does nothing nothing for that player that needs the extra help so definitely it's not nice knowing that the weakest player and so we don't need to highlight that any any further next thing another obvious one but one that I don't think happens enough probably is is encourage effort and attitude over other things we go to football and we're going to get praise for assists for goals for good passes and so forth for a weaker player coming into it that you're trying to help, you want to be praising other things as well. So effort and attitude are two easy things that anyone can control. How hard they're trying, uh, how coachable they've been that, that session. These things, are they turning up early? Are, are, they, are they staying behind a bit afterwards? All, all the coachable stuff that we talk about a lot at Foot Tech. Congratulate them and, and, and give them praise for those things because then football starts to become football training starts to become uh, not that oh I didn't score today I, I, I barely touched the ball I got tackled all the time and it starts to, to become oh you know I, I tried really hard and coach coach rewarded me for that and he applauded me for that um, these things are so easy for us to control as coaches and it does work it's hard 
working with mixed abilities it really is and it's even harder to get everybody up to a level but it can be done and this is one of the things that we've used time and time again using rewards using praise using encouragement to help these players the big thing is can you get them back to the next session can you keep get them coming back consistently and that's when the development will happen that's when the football ability will come but if they come twice then don't want to come for two weeks because they've had a bad experience because they think that they're rubbish it's going to make your life a lot harder encourage praise easy stuff to do this next one was one that i spoke to nick about who a lot listening to this will know he's the he's the co-founder at foot tech and, and nick's you know nick's I, I don't know anybody that researches football and child development more than nick um and he i was asking him i was throwing some ideas around it's always good for us to refresh our you know our um, learning as well and one of the things I was going to suggest today was within the matches is limit touches. So maybe maybe with the stronger players, we go down to two touch or one touch and things like that. Um, or you must use your left foot to score a goal now. You must use your right foot to score a goal now. And he got me thinking about it in a different way. He said, well, actually, yeah, you could do that. But would that limit decision making and therefore development for that for that for that? player that's that player that we're using that with so what he meant was if we're telling a player they've only got two touches well what if what if taking four or five touches was the better decision to make when he when he or she gets the ball what if we told them that they have to shoot with a left foot but it made so much more sense to shoot with a right foot in the situation that we're in and it got me it got me thinking that actually yeah, we're limiting their decision making there because we want to we want to create good footballers and good footballers are good decision makers um if we're telling them that they must do this and must do that when when another option is better and they and also they've they've sussed that they've they've solved that problem in their head that I must use my right foot to shoot this ball or uh, in fact if I just take this extra touch I can I can touch that ball into space if they've worked that out, but then we're telling them, no, 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 you can't do that, that's limiting their decision-making skills and therefore their football development. So I think a lot of people listening to this in grassroots would probably be saying, yeah, you know, a good idea would be to do uh, one touch, two touch. You must, you can only score um, with your left foot. Another one that we always hear, every player must touch the ball before you can score a goal. That's, that's all right, but are you then hampering them in other ways great that they can play two touch but what if they need more touches what if much more touches the better decision so that one bit of a gray area um, and i'm going to stay away from that when i'm working with my mixed ability groups now i'm probably not going to do that as much um, i may use two touch stuff and things in in, in certain aspects but yeah I'm, I'm probably going to stay away from that one because i don't think it'll help overall development as much as uh, some of the other things that i've mentioned and the last thing which I think is probably the most important is, is communicate with the parents. So if you're in a grassroots team and you are trying your best to help with uh, help develop uh, players with mixed abilities, we know it's not easy, but to parents on the sidelines, sometimes they just expect miracles and, and you know the, sometimes the biggest critics of you, even though you're doing your best and it's the same with us, you know, we get it as well. But, I think the thing to do is to to communicate with them, explain what you're doing. That doesn't need to be a group WhatsApp message or a group meeting. It can be going to talk to some maybe of the stronger players in the group, maybe going to talk to their parents to say, look, I'm going to start giving him or her some extra challenges within these games now. One, because I want to improve them. But two, we're going to try and help some of the other players that have come into this that just need, you know, just need a bit more help. But I think focusing on the... On the positive of that, of the fact that, look, you're, you're really good and I need to give you an extra challenge now. So we're going to look at maybe you trying to play forwards more often than not. Or we're going to try to put you on the uh, on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Or we're going to play you further back in some sessions. We're going to help your overall football, football development that way. I think if you're having these conversations with parents, then they're going to be looking at your session with, with different, different eyes, I think. And, and probably being quite grateful and thankful for what you're doing for that individual, you're focusing on the individual, which as a parent is a it's a fantastic thing. Um and then and then, you know, maybe maybe with the weaker players, it's this is a harder conversation to have sometimes because some parents won't want to accept that their child is isn't as good as others or whatever. But then you get a lot of parents that just want what's right for their child. So 
I think if you've got a child that's struggling, um, maybe new to football, come to your sessions, new to the team, then it's about constant communication over the first few weeks with that parent just to just to say, look, put minds at rest. We're we're gonna we vary the sessions, we we tweak things here and there to make sure that everybody can have elements of success and everybody will develop. Here's some of the ways that we do that. But the big thing is consistency, coming every week, praising the child alongside the parent for the attitude and effort they've put in at that session. All these things, but I think communication with the parents is a, is a big, big thing and a lot of grassroots coaches would would really help themselves by involving parents to an extent a little bit more. If they know why you're doing it, then I think that, that solves a lot of problems. It's when they start questioning things because they don't understand it. A lot of the times you're doing the right things, but somebody watching it from the sideline doesn't understand why you're doing what you're doing. So if you can explain that and involve them, they don't like that, that's fine. You can sleep easy at night knowing you're doing your best to help every child at your session. Um, so hopefully that is helpful. Um, it was certainly good for me to have a have a rethink about these things and it's always good to refresh fresh our minds. Like I say, the conversation with Nick on the, on the two-touch stuff, you could maybe argue one of the things that I said earlier on about, um, you know, can you sit back and just try and play forwards all the time? You've got to be careful with your language because, again, that might hamper decision-making. What if playing to the left or right what is the best decision, um, playing a sidewards pass? But it's the wording. It's it's can you do that? You don't. It's not saying you have to do that. It's when we say you must use your left foot to, pa uh, to, to pass or to shoot. It's you must only use two touches. It's these things that can hamper the decision-making. So I just wanted to make that point clear. Like we always say, parents, coaches... Anyone listening to this, if there's anything you want help with, anything, any advice, anything that you'd like us to talk about, you know, we, we do this day in, day out. So we'd love to put things out that people want to listen to and certainly offer advice when we can. As always, thank you for listening and we'll speak to you again soon.